Midtown Studios of Bloomberg Television in New York City, this is Charlie Rose. In Jonathan Nusseter's new film, Sunday, A Homeless Man, is mistaken for a famous director by a middle-aged actress. In the course of a single day, the two characters struggle to forge a connection and escape their isolation. The film is this year's winner of the Sundance Grand Jury Prize and the Waldo Salt Prize for screenwriting. Joining me now, the film's director and co-screenwriter, Jonathan Nosseter, also co-screenwriter James Lasden, and one of the film's stars, actress Lisa Harrow. And I am pleased to have them here. Welcome and congratulations. Um, I have known Lisa for a while because of a project I once did with Lisa and her husband, Roger Payne. So it's great to see you. You too. And you've been at this table twice. I right? have, yes, yes. yes. Uh, tell me about this story. Where you found this story and why it was intriguing to you. Uh, because so many people are making movies about young people and their own sort of angst and ethos. Well, I mean, I, you know, I think James and I tried. Yeah. The, the problem probably, I think we're bored with our own problems. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, I, you know, had met James at a dinner party and, and went out and bought a collection of short stories and there was a plot twist um, in one of them. And that intrigued me, that it, it seemed very interesting. It's sort of a case of mistaken identity in which two basically decent people are put into a position where in order to get some connection with each other, in order to find some passion, they have to lie. And the more they lie, actually, the deeper they tell the truth and become involved. And that, that seemed very interesting to me as a basis for a film. Um, and it, you know, certainly worked in the film business. It, you know, it, it seemed to resonate. So I, I think that dovetailed also with um, an interest that, that I'd had a long time in, for a long time in Queens sort of the forgotten borough of New York and somehow this story I mean James's story was set in London and dealt with young people and we started to sort of talk about it and it kept what on was the interest in Queens um well I, you know I, I think that that it's a part of it's a part of New York it's also a part of America it's maybe the last part of New York it's also a part of America and it, it's very much sort of people on the edge um it's um it's a borough of, of a kind of it sort of always gets a bum rap sort of the underdog that appeals to me and I, it seemed to have some sort of parallel in the story um, it's kind of kind of beauty there that's not obvious and that that I guess that also appeals to me what appeals to you about this story <laughs> well <laughs> the, the, the um, time to recant. the writer <laughs> the, the, the film it's very much not the, the movie of a short story of mine yeah. we, as Jonathan said we've just used the the basic premise as a point of departure and, uh, well, there are many things that, that sort of gained my interest, not least of which was the actual making of the film. Working in collaboration with someone has been a, a new experience for me. I mean, I'm used to sitting in a very quiet room for a very long period without another human being in sight. So um, the whole process of making it has, uh, was as, perhaps as interesting as, as the object that we made. And what was surprising about it for you? Um, well, I mean, the quality of the food during the shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Not to speak of the wine. <laughs> well, that, actually, that I can vouch for. It's the only sort of quality issue I can speak for. Because with you picked it out. Certain authority, yeah. There's certainly a lot to be said for making a, a film with a, with a uh, qualified uh, wine person. Yeah. Uh, uh, sommelier. Um, where we went, I mean, I had no idea. Well, neither of us had any idea that we were going to be taking the story into some of the directions that it went. Okay, I mean, tell me what makes these movie characters, these characters on the screen, interesting. Why do I want to see them? They are engaged in, in the course of a single day in living out a relationship that would probably take normal people in the normal non-dramatic circumstances perhaps five years, but we've, I hope, constructed it in such a way that it feels natural to that day and yet compresses that amount of drama. I mean, it's a story about a relationship, but it also it involves political issues and emotional issues, all kinds of dramas. Yeah. And, yeah, and it's, I mean, I think part of, you know, part of the intensity, at least for us, and we was feeling that, that, that you have five years distilled down to one day, so automatically, five years of the ups and downs of relationships that hopefully people will recognize, but telescoped into one day, and that gives it an intensity that, that you know, I think for us was very exciting. Um, what was a challenge for you as a, for this character? <laughs> 
Well, she was not a worse actress than I know all about that. <laughs> um, the, the challenge was um, was actually working here in New York. Um, I mean, interesting enough for me, Queens was quite different from how Jonathan sees it. Queens, I really liked because it felt human to me. Yeah. Um, whereas Manhattan doesn't feel human at all. It feels very. It felt, every night when we were driving home across the bridge, I used to feel as if I was entering some sort of walled bastion against everything in the rest of the world, which was Manhattan. And so, but, you know, <laughs> because in Queens, things were people size. They were yeah, the right, size yeah, of humanity. Well and said. I like that. And I like the quality of, he, of, of the, the people that you, you saw around the place. But as far as the challenge of the film goes, it wasn't really a challenge in the, in the sense that I was working with Jonathan, who I immensely liked, and I met James, but, and also David Suchet, who's my co-star in the right. film, who's an old friend of mine. So it, it gave us a chance to work together on something that we longed to do for a long time. And um, it, the, relation, the reason why the film for us is so good is that the story of the relationship between these two people is so real, it's so touching, it's so funny and humane that it, it's the sort of stuff that actors really love because it, it really requires you to do what you do best, which is just to be a human being in a situation which is asking you to fulfill dreams, break people's hearts, all that sort of thing. And Madeline is going where? I mean, what's well, I think she's sort of on her way down yeah. and out. I mean, she has lived elsewhere than Queens. Her marriage has failed. She has um, a, a career that doesn't seem to have happened. It seems to have quietly expired, as so many careers do when you reach your late 40s, early 50s yeah. for actors. And she, she somehow ended up in this no man's land, as she sees it, spiritually lost, spiritually without root, the way Oliver is also spiritually, well, he's literally homeless. And so the, these two souls join together on this particular Sunday. And the journey that they go on exploring each other through feeling a sense of love towards each other, uh, first of all, to be, by being intrigued and by not quite knowing who each other is, and then gradually, even though they don't know who each other is, they find something until finally they've gone through the barriers of of identity into a really honest, deep connection, which is profound and very moving, I think. And I think that's what, if people's hearts are going to be touched, that's what it's about. It's about older people being honest about the things that they're frail about, the things that... Well, I mean, you, you say, speak about honesty, though, because the relationships are built on a series of deceptions Indeed. and misunderstandings. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm also, I mean, I don't know if I agree with you about... about the idea that, that your character is, is going nowhere. And because I think that, that I mean, in a, in a funny way, what you do, what your character does in the film, is give an amazing performance, which is proof that actually this is an actor. I mean, I think what you did as an actor also is proof of the greatness of the actress. Yeah, but we all film. know that actors can give amazing performances, but they still don't necessarily have what's constituted as a career. Well, because, because we know directors are dense. <laughs> no, 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 it's something to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the accountant, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead. I mean, I like this actually better than <laughs> well, what I was doing. <laughs> this actually we, gives we you some... We sat around a table rehearsing. Dave and I will be spectators for a while. And <laughs> this gives you some indication, yeah, I like think. Like a of, tennis match <laughs> for me. Well, it, oh, I mean, right. we did three weeks of rehearsal, and there were definitely... We tussled. Mm. And you would say just that. I don't agree with where you think the motivations oh, are, the yeah. interests of the character. We usually weren't that polite. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good that. I mean, that, that's the only way to work, I think, because in the end, what comes out is something that's been really searched for and found by all of us. Which and started... And I'm sure how you guys work. Well, I mean, we, there, there, there were sort of built-in ambiguities at practically every juncture of the story. Um, so they did need to be sort of talked about and yeah. felt through.
We met in London at the festival a few years back. You don't remember who I am. I'm a friend of your camera operator, Terry Jennings. My name is Madeline. It's Madeline Basie. Madeline? Of course. I keep, I keep reading in the trade journals about um, all the different projects that you're supposed to be directing. Um, but but what, what are you doing here? In, in Queens, I mean. Uh, are you in the a location scout. Yeah, that's right. Oh, where else would you be in this no man's land? <laughs> um, well, what are you looking for? Uh, warehouses? Boundaries? Uh, perhaps you're going to get some shots of Manhattan. I'm looking the... for a diner. Oh, of course. Do you know the Blue Sky? It's, um, it, it's quite a place. I, I could show you. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> well, that's one of them, yes. Yeah. That, um, your background in terms of Greek literature influenced you in the making this film? Um, uh, yeah, I knew I couldn't make a living with the other thing. Um, no, well, I don't, you know, I mean... Oh, I, you, you're an interesting guy. You come to the filmmaking from a... That's only because you don't know me. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's assume it, I might be... Uh, correct, this one time. Oh, thanks, All very right. generous. I mean, you come to it from a different place. Uh, yeah, so. I mean, I, I, you know, I mean, I went to art school. Right. Um, discovered I was definitely a wretched painter. Um, <laughs> and with a lot of self-confidence. Uh, yeah, well, that was borne out by experience. <laughs> um, and and uh, then I went decided to go to college once I, you know, yeah. um, was not desperate and and was very excited. It's actually that, I mean, it's, it's the one thing I have no regrets about, of having studied ancient Greek at, 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 in college, and, yeah. and reading The Odyssey, which is the first sort of great movie ever made, as far right. as I'm concerned, yeah. just because it's such an amazing story. And, you know, people get excited about sort of the narrative innovations and all the sort of hoopla and something like Pulp Fiction, but the truth is, is that all that stuff was already there in Homer. Um, and it's a great story, it's a great read, but it's all also based on sort of psychology and emotions, and that's in part of learning Greek and of learning the language is to feel that. And, and I think that's great training. Um, uh, it's something that, you know, I certainly, I guess I don't have anything else to draw on, so. Uh, Why movies? Um, I don't know, I mean, I guess it's a sort of, I, you know, I think that, that, that films are a natural dumping ground for people who have marginal talent and a lot of other things. <laughs> you can sort of combine them all and hope that you make a stew that will work. I can't believe Luther believes a word of what you're saying. No, no, I don't. No, I've listened to Jonathan Lola. But if you ask James, I think he'll... he'll James will second, second me. <laughs> what, James? He can confirm every word. He can confirm every word. It's a dumping ground for people who can't do it. Well, no, else. then there's one other talent, I think, that is, is a director that's very necessary, which is that you go out and you find a great poet and a great actor, and you let them do the work for you. Yeah, um, and you just, in a sense... Sorry? You just put them in the pot, and then if it happens, you come out with a great But he had a concoction. really clear vision, I have to say that. I mean, I first met Jonathan uh, in a coffee bar. What, is that what it's called in here? It, yeah. it, well, it used to be, but I did a wine list for them. Oh, <laughs> now they're a wine bar. They're a wine bar. <laughs> in, in a street here in New York a couple of years, well, 18 months ago. And uh, it was wonderful talking to him, because I haven't met very many directors who can talk about Greek drama and uh, the classical literature, and that, that's very important to me. And so we had a lot, a lot to talk about apart from just film. And we planned three, four hours to we just talk and talk and talk. And it was and <laughs> until I sort of hit you and then I got lost in the story. But that's another story. But what I love about um, Jonathan is that his, his enormous eclectic knowledge of the way he brings his role to bear and then what he what it is he sees. And his vision is absolute. And it's it's an interesting thing because his artistry is as great as ours. You, when you come up and against it sometimes, it's quite hard, but the great thing is that <laughs> we push through all that to find, you know, the, the product at the end, which I think one of the great reasons it's been so successful, this film, I'm sure, is because of the, the vision of Jonathan and then the rest of us well, being part I, of that. I think that other and part is more accurate, it. that, mm. that it started, I mean, I think the film is very much a joint vision, starting with us, and, and then you have extraordinary artists like David and Lisa, David Suchet and Lisa Harrow, the editor, Madeline Gavin, all these people, and I think you feel the force of many personalities. Mm. No, James? Well, I, of course that's partly true, but I think, you do, I mean, given the practical <laughs> difficulties <laughs> of, <laughs> I mean, I, plausible denial. G given, given, given how hard it is, 
to make a film, to make any kind of film, but especially to make an independent film with a limited budget and all the rest of it, unless there is some person, and it has to just be one person, because initially it's coming from your own head. There weren't people coming to you and saying, make us a film. Well, that always so has to be true. To you have to have yes, one clear driven yeah, vision. Driving and force, that and that, and that was... Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, that's... The, and the point, the point of the matter. Taking any credit tonight? No, I'm, I'm happy to. You know, I mean, the funny somewhere thing. Somewhere somebody's that, told you the that. The funny thing about <laughs> directing, I think, is that people never understand what a director actually does, and they give credit where credit isn't due, and probably fail to give credit where it is. Well, due. enlighten us as to what you I mean have by no that. idea. I mean, that's why I need to do a couple more films. Good knowledge but of wine. That's well, I, I think yeah. that's critical. We keep mentioning wine. You, uh, you actually uh, are an esteemed. Uh, wine expert who recommends wine to three or four New York restaurants, right? Uh, I work in the wine business. Okay. I work, <laughs> I've worked in the wine business since I was about 15, um, and when I, I grew up in Europe and started working in restaurants. Yeah. All right. So, um, so um, you know, and for the last four or five years, I've sort of honed the thing, and I, I'm, I do wine lists for restaurants, and, and I've actually got about five or six now under my belt in New York, and it's, okay. you know, it's good. It allows you to work in the film business and, you know, Actually, when crew doesn't get paid adequately, at least you can give them good wine yeah. and daily. <laughs> 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 There's a whole area of Soho one can wander around with Jonathan, and, and there's not part of the restaurant that you can't go into and get a free meal and a bottle of extremely good wine. <laughs> right. Let me, let me uh, roll tape and we'll show one more clip from Sunday before we wrap this up. Here it is. Isn't this genius? It's a strange day to you. Or, or do you have lots of days like this? Not too many. I, I meet a man I hardly know on the street. We have a drink, talk, we make love. <laughs> he runs off thinking I'm some sort of a maniac. So, no, no, but later, here we are, sitting in a diner, like old friends, just talking about, I don't know. I, I, I feel as if something incredible is happening, but at the same time, it just feels perfectly natural and ordinary. I like it. I mean, that's what you want to see in the film, some intimacy, some real conversation, mm. you know, and just, don't you? Mm. I mean, that oh, God, yes. That's extraordinary. Yes. I mean, it, it, I think it's extraordinary. I mean, Lisa spent weeks of work building up to that moment, because I think for your character, it's the most important moment. I know that at the end of that take, particularly on that take, the entire crew was stone silent, moved. Mm. Um, and it was it's very, very powerful. I think, you know, I think that moment also sort of crystallizes an aspect of the film, which is that it, it, I think, you know, both your character and David, David Suchet's character live out a kind of Walter Mitty fantasy in a way. They're able to, through each other or within themselves, reinvent who they are for the day, but the reinvention actually has some truth in it, given the way that you and David portrayed it. And that, I mean, that's sort of a nice fantasy, I think. Does this, James, change? how you see what you would like to do with your life? Mm. Yeah, interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I mean, um, it opens the possibility of doing something that I previously only kind of idly daydreamed about, which is working, write, write film scripts. Um, and it's something I had wanted to do, but I'd never actively sought it out. And um, I guess it now does make that possible which is pleasant to contemplate. What was that track you had about Ezra Pound? <laughs> no, this is a great track. I, I know, go ahead, this is wonderful. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I mean, uh, I come from the world of, yeah, I mean, I've written poetry before, and he said publishing a book of poetry in the States is like dropping a rose petal into the Grand Canyon and waiting for the echo, which is absolutely <laughs> what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, film is, uh, things operate More on a slightly More. More louder. A slightly louder. <laughs> Level, yeah. uh, much success to all of you. Uh, Sundance has already put an imprimatur, I think, on the film uh, and brought attention to it. So congratulations. Great.
great to see you, Dave. Thank you. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> 